Hi, welcome to the Service Monster mobile app. Today we're going to be taking a look at the technician view. So once you enter your credentials, this is what your technicians are going to be greeted with. Uh, starting from the very top, you can see today's date. If you touch on that, it's going to pull up a calendar. So you can see any jobs you might have scheduled in the future, or you can use the back arrow to see jobs you had scheduled previously. Just click the close button to return you back to the home page. Just below that, you're going to see an average of the jobs you have assigned to you. Now, if you're the kind of company who has a per square inch or per square foot billing on your service items, then this is obviously going to change as you do that kind of work. So this is just a rough guesstimate of uh, what your average for your jobs should be. A little further below that, in the blue bar, you can see the total number of jobs you have assigned to you. This is your estimates and your work orders. Next to that, you have your non-billable tasks assigned to you. So this could be uh, take the truck to Jiffy Lube, or it could be call a customer. Just basically non-billable work assigned. And then if you are the kind of company who has your technicians close out invoices and take payments in the field, then at the end of the day, then two jobs should be reflected as two completed invoices. That is something that as a company, you should go ahead and have that discussion if you want your staff to take the payments and stuff in the field, because I'm going to show you how to do that as we progress. Scroll a little further down and you'll see we have placards indicating the work that you have assigned to you. And if I scroll a little further, here's that non-billable task that's assigned. You can see I need to call a customer to discuss an estimate. And at the very bottom of your screen, you have your home and schedule buttons. So you can switch back and forth between the two views really easily. Now, here on the schedule view, again, we have these little placards showing you the work assigned. So let's go ahead and just open up one of them. Now here in the top right hand corner, pay attention to this little uh, pencil icon. Anytime you see that, that's where you can edit. So click on that. And for example, let's say we get on site and this job is going to take more than just an hour. It's going to take about an hour and a half. So we can go ahead and change the anticipated duration and then use the check to save your work. Down below, you have the customer's account right here. So if you touch on his name, that's going to bring up his account information. You can see any notes about his account or any custom fields that you might need to enter information on or just to keep track of about this customer. You can also get a quick view of their history with you right here under stats. Just use the back arrow to return without saving your work. Right here with the map, Go ahead and touch on that. That's going to open up Google Maps and route you to the customer's location. So just click on Start, and you're on your way. Once you do get to the customer's location, we have some options here where you can uh, send the customer an email, take pictures, get their signature. Um, mainly, we'll come back to this in just a couple of minutes because the completion wizard right here is a nice step-by-step -step checkout procedure to make sure you get pictures and payments and stuff like that. And we'll cover that when we're all done. So once you get to the customer site, you're going to go ahead and click here on the check-in. Or if you're on your way to this customer's location and you want to let them know you're on your way, you can click here to uh, launch the phone and call the customer, or you can click here to send the customer a text. Here on the text message screen, you can go ahead and just start typing in your own message right here, or you can choose to engage one of your pre-made SMS templates. If you've went in to set your own, then you can easily come in here and select, for example, a 30 minutes away message. And as long as you have the send via service monster checked, then it's automatically going to fill in this information and send it out to the customer. So it was a, hi, Bruce, this is my company name, letting you know I'm on my way and I'll be there at 555 Your Street. And then again, everything in the brackets will automatically fill in for you. Uh, without sending this through Service Monster, this is going to simply engage your phone and send the message out, but it will not be able to automatically fill in this information. Another thing to consider is if you do send it through uh, Service Monster, then it's going to use our 425 area code. That's our free phone number we give you. 
If you opt for Twilio service to have more control over your text messaging, then you could actually enter in your own phone number so the customer would see it come from your number. And also Twilio service allows two-way communication. So if the customer replied to this text message, then with Twilio service, you'd be able to get that response and reply back to the customer. Go ahead and just click on the little airplane here to send it. Then once I get to the customer site, click here on the check-in and that's going to start the clock. So you can see down below uh, the total anticipated duration of this job and above it is how long we've actually been on site. Scroll a little further and we do have multiple note fields. There may be job notes, that's notes about this actual work. There may be account notes, that's about the customer. There may be site notes, those are individual notes about this customer's location. So if you do have multiple note fields, pay attention, there might be some really important information there for you. Scroll just a little further, and here's where you can see the work order itself. So if this bar right here is blue, that means you're dealing with an estimate. If it's green, that means you're dealing with a work order. Go ahead and touch on it, and that's going to take you into the order screen. So again, in the order screen, up here in the top right, we have that edit icon. And from here, you can see where you can change the order type. So if you went out on an estimate and the customer agreed, then you can turn the estimate into a work order. Or if you're doing a work order and you're ready to collect payment, you can turn everything into an invoice here in the drop down as well. Here's where you can apply a discount to the entire order. So if I want to go ahead and apply 15% across the board, go ahead and just enter that in right here. If your customer does have a tax rate that applies and you've already created that tax rate in your settings, then you can come in here and select from your pre-made tax rates. And if there's anything where you need the office to potentially follow up on this order afterwards, you can use the uh, flag for review here to go ahead and let the office know there's something they might need to take a look at on this order when everything's all said and done. And down below you can see the lead source or where you got this customer from. Go ahead and click on the checkbox to save your work. Scroll down just a little more. And here's where you can see order notes. And this has a special little marker on it. Anything you type in here is going to print out on the estimate, on the work order, and on the invoice. So anything typed here is very customer visible. Down below, you can see the work we're performing for this customer. So we do have two services that we're doing. The first one, Generic Service 1, let's imagine that this is just a fixed fee service. So you charge $150 to clean or repair something. It doesn't matter how big or small it is. The next service, Generic Service 2, is something where you're charging by the square inch or the square foot or even potentially the linear foot on. So that's going to be potentially variable pricing depending on the size of the job. So first, let's go ahead and show you how to work with this fixed pricing item. This is the work you're going to be doing, but we can also document where you do this service. Like let's imagine for uh, service one that you're a power washer and you're cleaning a customer's driveway. Doesn't matter how big it is, you charge $150 to power wash. Let's go ahead and document that driveway. Let's, let's take pictures before and after the work, document any problem areas, you know, things like that. So in order to document your work, click on service items and click on add a service item. And now we can go ahead and enter in the details about this driveway. Under dimensions, if you want, you can go ahead and put in the size of this driveway, but it's going to give you the total square footage. And since we're not charging by the square inch or square foot, then just set your quantity to one, since we're only charging for one driveway, no matter how many square feet it is. And then under description, enter any notes about this driveway. If there's any damaged areas, if there's any heavy mold areas, anything else like that. Then click on take a photo and you can take a quick picture. Now this is just our offices really early in the morning, but just a quick example of the picture you could take. And then under image name, this is where you can put in any notes or give this picture a label. and click the check to save your work, and then click the check 
to save your service item. Now we link the work that you did to where you did the work. So click on the line item so we can see our billable work and open up generic service. At the bottom, click on plus service items and put a check where you perform the service. Click the check to save and apply the description and the quantity. Then click the check one more time and we've successfully married the driveway with this service. You can see it labels it right here. So one driveway at $150. Now for generic service two, let's imagine you're a carpet cleaner and you're gonna be doing this customer's living room. Um, we're gonna be charging by the square foot for it. So let's document that living room, especially any high traffic or high stain areas. Um, and then also take care of your billing at the same time. So let's click on service items and let's click on add a service item again. And this time we'll call it the living room. On your dimensions, go ahead and put in the size. So let's say that this is a 12 by 25 foot living room. But let's also imagine that there's a big entertainment center that's not going to be moved. So we're going to clean around it. So let's go ahead and subtract a three foot by six foot entertainment center. And maybe there's a big couch that's not going to be moved. So let's subtract a three foot by seven foot couch. But let's also imagine that there's a walk-in closet off of this living room. You're going to be cleaning the carpet in there too. So let's go ahead and click on plus and let's go ahead and add a three foot by five foot closet. So really you're cleaning 276 square feet. Just enter in your math under the dimensions. We'll take care of it for you. Then under the description, just as before, any enter any notes about this room. And then take a picture. Or if you've already taken lots of pictures, then you can click on Upload Photos from Device. That's going to give you a gallery view so you can see all of your pictures and select those ones that you want to upload here. Then click the check to save your work. And just as before, come to the line item. Go ahead and open up the service that you did. Click on plus service item and let's link it to the living room and click the checkbox. Once again, update the description and the quantity. Now let's imagine because this customer is using my uh, driveway service, they're using my power washing and they're also using my carpet cleaning. So I'm going to give them a discount for, you know, multiple services. So on this one, I'm going to go ahead and take 20% off. So here you can enter in your discount. And here's where you choose if it's just a fixed price or a percentage. So $20 versus 20%. And click the check to save your work. Let's imagine we finished with all of our work now. We've, we've cleaned the driveway, we've cleaned the living room, we're all done with this job. It's time to close it out. Let's go ahead and use the back arrow to go back to the job view. And here we can access the completion wizard. The completion wizard is a nice step-by-step -step procedure to make sure that we close this order out properly. Starting off at the very top, you have invoice overview. Go ahead and uh, touch that. And that's going to give you a quick overview of your order. Make sure all your line items are correct, all your billing items are correct. And then hand the phone to your customer and they're going to click, OK, I'm ready to sign. Once they do, they're greeted with a, a brief overview of the invoice itself. They can zoom in and take a look at the billing items and stuff like that. And then they can hit the signature button. Now, my phone won't show you that this rotates, so you're going to have to turn your phone sideways and the customer can sign. Once you get that signature, it actually makes it like a little picture. So just drag that picture so it looks like it's on the signature line and click Upload to save. Now we have a signed invoice. Let's go ahead and use the back arrow. And you can see here we've completed the signature step. 
Step two, capture images. If you haven't already taken pictures, we give you a reminder. Take lots of photos and document your work. Step three, check out of job. This is going to stop that clock running that we started the moment we got on the customer's location. Step four, convert the order to invoice. So if you're going to have your customers close this out and take payment, then they're going to click right here and switch it over to an invoice. So now we know all the work is done, it's time to get paid. Down here under step six, apply payment. This is where you can choose how the customer pays you. Click on record a payment. And here under select payment method, you can choose how the customer paid you. Now, if you use authorize.net or Stripe to run your credit cards, right here you would be able to run your credit card payment. If you're using Square or Clover or anyone else and you're happy with them, then just go ahead and choose MasterCard or Visa here and run your payment with your provider however you normally do. Just tell Service Monster how you got paid. And click the check to save your work. Now that we've applied the payment, scroll down just a little bit further and you'll see where we can send the customer an email and here you can just start typing in your own message down here at the bottom. Or you can go ahead and come up to the top and choose apply a template. And if you've went through and customized your templates, then you could just choose your thank you invoice paid. And then click the checkbox. You can see it automatically inserts the template here. And right here is a copy of that invoice. So click check, and now the customer has a copy. And finally, the last step, mark the job as complete. This means you're all done with this work. And we can go ahead and click here on the home button to take you back to the home page. And we can see that yes, one of our jobs is now an invoice. And this little checkbox lets us know it's complete. If we click on the schedule view, we can also see that yes, it's complete. Now down at the bottom, you can see that we need to call our customer Bruce Wayne. So let's go ahead and just click on this task. And this is where you can document that we need to call this customer to discuss this estimate. So here's where you can access your phone. Just click here and it's going to go ahead and dial your customer straight from your phone. Or you can use the text again to uh, text your customer either directly from your phone or you can engage the Service Monster templates if you send the check, uh, the text via Service Monster. Enter any notes here. And then when you're all done, click on complete and that lets the office staff know that you've completed this task. You can see it marks you as complete, then it takes you back out to the schedule. Go ahead and come down to the bottom and we can go to the home page. And here we can see we started off with two jobs and now we have one invoice because the Bruce Banner job has been completed. If you have any questions, please give us a call at 888-901-3300 and let our help desk know how we can assist. Thank you for choosing Service Monster. And that's a brief overview of the Service Monster Technician View. Please give us a call at 888-901-3300 if you have any further questions. Our Courteous Help Desk is happy to assist.